Hey, what is up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial and sort of review of a program and is a plugin called Nob Color Remap. Now, basically this is a color plugin that can both work in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. Uh, the Premiere Pro one is in beta, so it's a little bit unstable compared to the DaVinci Resolve one. So I'm going to do most of my tutorial in DaVinci Resolve, but the interface is basically exactly the same. But yeah, this is a really cool precision color uh, it's, it's really hard to kind of explain what this is. It is basically a replacement for the color curves. So um, this thing is really powerful, and I'm not going to go super far in depth, but I just really wanted to tell you guys about this, and I think um, how really helpful this thing can be and how incredibly easy it is. Uh, so this is actually from Time and Pixels. That's the name of the company, and it's the Nob Color Remap. Now, little disclaimer, they did send this to me, but I actually reached out to them first to ask about it because I had heard some really good stuff about it. Uh, but of course, you know, they're not paying me as always. So anyway, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. And again, this is going to be identical in Premiere Pro. The only difference is you're just going to apply it from your presets in Premiere Pro instead of in your open effects in DaVinci. So if you're in DaVinci, you're going to go to your color tab and then you're going to hop on and make a new node. And then you're going to open up the search in the open effects and then Nobe Color Remap. And again, if, if you're in Premiere, you're just going to drag it onto your clip. Now, the first thing you're going to see is that it's going to open up this little window box. And although we can work here, I'm going to show you a better way to work and uh, just, just a better way to work in general. So to kind of give you a quick rundown, uh, over here we can see some settings. There's things like processing, so you can change it from the GPU to the CPU depending on your system. In my case, I have a better GPU, so I'm going to kind of offload some of it to the GPU. And then we have some adjustments, which we're not going to touch right now. But um, one of the big things to remember is the color space. Now, uh, the HSP is the one to use by default. But if you were using log or something like that, you can use the log, which is really cool. Um, I'm using the HSP right now. It's the most basic. And I already have a Rec. 709 conversion LUT. So that's after that conversion LUT. And then obviously, here is the Nob uh, color remap. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Open Color Remap. And basically, this is going to open the software that you would use in both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. And if you look at this uh, first little thing right here, you're going to notice that this looks very familiar. And it is basically a vector scope. Now, we're going to turn off the hue saturation bypass to activate this. And basically what this is, and, and this is like the main focus tool. There's two other tools, and they're really neat. Um, but this is like the the big tool and sort of where you'll probably be doing most of your work unless you're doing something a little more intense. So the concept of Nob Color Remap, Remap as a plugin is the idea that you can move colors in a more visual way. So now if you're in Premiere, there's this is stuff that you basically just can't do without it being a lot worse. So I mean, like if you're in Premiere, this is a no-brainer. In DaVinci Resolve, these are things that you can do, the types of changes we're going to make. But again, it's a lot more steps and it's a little less precise. And that's the thing that's so nice about Nob Color Remap is it is incredibly precise. So let's see how it works. So the first thing is uh, right with this shot, this is my GH5. And one of the things that the GH5 is notorious for is getting sort of the pink uh, hues in skin tones. It has a little bit too much magenta. So typically you would go in and either change the white balance, but the problem with that is you're changing all of the hues. And again, it's not as precise. You're just sort of like, you know, painting with large brushes is the best way to put it. And the other thing is it's, it's not very visual. It's hard to tell exactly where these skin tones may fall and stuff like that. But the great thing about having this vector scope is we can see where these things are. So of course, as we go out, it's more saturated. As we come in, it's less saturated. And then we have our color wheel, of course, or, you know, less of a wheel. <laughs> um, now we can do things like add more points, but for right now, this is going to be, again, I'm, I'm more or less just kind of giving you an idea of what you can do with this. And then of course you could take it a lot further. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull his skin tones a little bit more towards the yellow and the green and sort of get rid of that magenta. And we're going to desaturate them ever so slightly. So that way his skin, uh, he has pretty fair skin. So we don't want it to, you know, have that like deep red or pink saturation underneath. Now, typically speaking, if you were to just be using this right here, you would pretty much just come here and you can drag this and you can see it's just doing whatever, right? 
Now, that's great, and I, I do appreciate that, but the thing that I love most about the Nob Color Remap plugin is the fact that you can actually do it right on the screen. So I can click on my image and I can click right on his skin here, roughly where these are. And you can see that over here in the left, it's actually making a dot pop up where that is. And I'm gonna click and I'm just gonna pull ever so slightly and just pull away. Now, I don't know what kind of monitor you have, so you might not be able to see everything as much as I can, but on my monitor, you can see that there's a pretty fair difference. If we just move this point back, there's that kind of red hues in his skin. And then right there, we're pulling them out and we're desaturating them ever so slightly. Cool, but let's say that you're affecting a little bit too much of the other stuff around it. And this is where, again, Nob Color Remac becomes incredibly powerful. So we're gonna reset that. So we know that his skin is basically right around here. And we can check again by going over here. And we can see that it's pretty close to that dot. So let's say we wanna move this, but we don't wanna move everything else around it. So what we can do is we can actually select these, just click on them. And basically this is saying, hey, I want you to stay where you are. So we can go through, click all those, and now they're green. And the one we want to actually manipulate is not green. Now notice when I pull these now, it's only moving this and not moving everything else around it. So right now I'm pulling that yellow out of his, or excuse me, that pink and red out of his skin, desaturating because I'm getting closer, but also pulling it towards the yellows. And now his skin tone looks much more natural, but I'm not affecting all of the reds because back here, you can see when we were pulling all of that, I'm moving this more towards yellow, so it's gonna be more yellow. Um, stuff over here was getting pulled a little bit more towards that yellow as well. So again, the fact that we just simply did that in one node and it's done. Yeah, and again, it's just so quick, it's so easy, and to me, this app is, or this plugin, it's not an app, I guess, this plugin is really great for things like the skin tone, where you want to move skin tone or a specific hue um, and sort of mess with its hue and its saturation values. But of course, it doesn't stop there. So we also have another tool, if we click on this little guy right here, this is the luminosity and saturation. So... Again, this is something where we can actually change the, the luminosity values and how they're being saturated. So for instance, we could pick a, a kind of a darker value and we could bring that up. And it's also bringing up kind of like the luma. Um, there's a hue in luma, but it's, it's kind of similar. You're also saturating it at the same time. And you can see that we can just move this around. We can you know, pull it a little bit uh, so that it's going desaturated. We can saturate it. And we're also changing the levels here as well. So in this case, maybe I want his sweater to be a little bit more green or that blue green and then pull it up a little bit so it's a little bit brighter. Um, and that, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, again, we're just, you know, we're changing something really quick. And, you know, obviously in this case, it's, you know, it's not any exciting, but you could see where the application obviously is really valuable. Then we also have the hue versus luma. And again, this is more, oops, we're gonna click on that tool. And, and again, this is more, this tool I feel is a little similar, um, but of course you could, let's say this yellow back up here, we could really brighten all of that. Um, and again, if we wanted to do a certain, so if we wanted to lock these other ones, we could lock those and we could just pull from here up or something. So we're gonna put that back because I don't want that really to, to go that far. <laughs> um, but there's one really important task that you need to do inside of this window. And I did this a lot at first and I wasn't sure what was wrong. You have to click apply changes. So basically all of those changes you made now are going to be applied. So you're going to click apply changes and boom, all of those changes now have been made and are on your node. So we can see if we toggle that on and off, again, we sort of lightened his shirt up and saturated it more. And we sort of pulled those pink tones out of his face. And again, I'm doing this really quickly, obviously. A perfect scenario in a perfect world, you would go much more in depth and, you know, really fine tune it. But again, you can just see with what speed that you can do this. And generally speaking, you would, whoops, you would make a new node and you would do most of this kind of stuff in the hue versus hue or hue versus saturation. Or of course you would be maybe pulling like the highlights away. So we're going to pull, but you can see that ju that's just doing everything. Um, maybe you'd have to then qualify or do stuff like that. So again, it's just the simplicity of Nob Color Remap and the fact that it's an easy plugin to use and it's something that you can easily just drop on a node and then do everything. And again, if you're in Premiere, it's the same concept. It's the same thing. Um, I just love the fact that it's a visual piece of 
color software. You can visually, the, the fact that you can be here and manipulate stuff on the screen, I think is really key because you can just click and drag an area that you want, figure out where it is, go back and then change that if you wanted to. You know, we could easily just pull greens and or whatever hue we want and make them whatever. And uh, you can see his skin is pretty much in place there because it's still locked. So that's another cool thing too. You could lock in someone's skin tone you know, correct their skin tone, lock it in, and then change the rest of the colors drastically so it looks like they're in a different scenario. The, the, the possibilities with this software are endless. And again, it's very simple. It's just easy to use, but I don't think you want to mess up the concept of easy and intuitive. Um, this is an intuitive software. It is very intense uh, in what it's doing. It's very precise. But again, it's, it's simple to use where you're not, you know, they're not dumbing things down, but they're just making it a lot easier. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the link below in the description where we actually, you can link up to the Nope Color Remap. Again, if you have DaVinci Resolve, it's a great plugin. If you have Premiere Pro, if, I think if you have Premiere Pro, it's even more because it's kind of like a must at that point. You know, Premiere Pro's color is a little lacking and having something like this that's so simple and so precise just really would turn around that workflow. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.